Commercial airline companies spend millions of dollars every year to design the most fuel-efficient and economical jet engines. Today, there are hundreds of different jet engine designs that companies and militaries use every day. Here are the top 15 most incredible jet engine designs. Number 15. The Olympus 593 The Cold War was an exceptionally tense period of time. Yet of all the engines that the West had at its disposal, the Olympus 593 was one of the most iconic. Created in a partnership between the British firm Rolls-Royce and the French firm Snecma, it was the powerhouse behind the legendary Concorde jet, which thanks to the Olympus 593 was able to reach speeds of Mach 2.2 thanks to the 14,000 kilograms of thrust that the engine produced. The Olympus 593 was also able to maintain a thermal efficiency of about 43% when the engine was in supersonic cruising flight, making it a true standout. To top this off, to this day it's the only afterburning jet to ever power a commercial airliner, and thus we'd say that the engine was nothing short of incredible. Number 14. The Whittle Engine While British Royal Air Force officer Sir Frank Whittle isn't exactly a household name, he holds the distinction of being the father of the modern jet engine. You see, he first began developing the blueprint for jet engines in the late 1920s after realizing that it could be more efficient to use a turbine instead of a piston engine to compress the air in a jet engine. But after having his designs rejected by the Royal Air Force in 1929, he began to look to the private market to create his designs. After years of ups and downs, these efforts culminated in Whittle forming a company known as Power Jets Limited to build the engine. And soon the Whittle's W1 turbojet engine was built and in service, seeing action for the first time on May 15th of 1941 on the Gloucester E28 prototype. Due to the overwhelming success of the engine, Whittle's design ended up becoming the standard across the industry. And so, in our opinion, it was a true trailblazer. Number 13 the Junkers Jumo 004. In discussions about World War II, American and British technology is often highlighted, but on the German side, the Junkers Jumo 004 was an extremely important piece of machinery. Developed in the late 1930s under the supervision of the Nazi regime, the Jumo 004 powered the twin-engine Messerschmitt Me 262, which was the first fighter jet to be put into operation during World War II. While it produced what was at the time an impressive 900 kilograms of thrust, the engine was notoriously unreliable and often lasted about a dozen flight hours before running into problems. However, it was only once the Germans had the Junkers Jumo 004 that they could start to develop more powerful engines. Number 12. The Scramjet Engine Barreling through the sky at 11,000 kilometers per hour is an exceptionally difficult task, Yet with a scramjet engine, it's entirely possible. While scramjet technology has been in development since World War II, one of the first successful scramjet flights came in 2004, when NASA launched the X-43. The engine worked by taking oxygen straight from the atmosphere as opposed to relying on an onboard supply of heavy oxidizer, and this allowed it to do the work so efficiently and effectively that it could travel at speeds of up to Mach 9.6. To put this into perspective, this not only made it one of the fastest aircraft ever, but gave it enough speed to travel from New York to Tokyo in just two hours. So we think it's fair to say that scramjet engines are some of the best engines around. Number 11. The Honeywell TFE 731 Of all the jet engines out there, one of the most commonly used is the Honeywell TFE 731 engine. First introduced in 1972, it exploded on the market thanks to the fact that it had a lower fuel consumption and produced less noise than previous jet engines, leading it to being used in various Learjet, Dassault, and Cessna aircraft. Due to its use in several different aircraft, more than 11,000 units of the engine have been sold since its inception. And in total, these engines have racked up more than 100 million flight hours. So we think it's fair to say that the Honeywell TFE 731 is a pretty solid piece of machinery. Number 10. The Vartsila Francisco While there are many air-based jet engines out there, one of the coolest water-based jet engines is built into the Vartsila Francisco. This is because the Vartsila Francisco holds the distinction of being both the fastest passenger ferry in the world and one of the first ferries to make use of liquefied natural gas, or LNG. Now, the boat is powered by two LJX-1720SR axial water jets, 
And as a result, a 99-meter catamaran has a light ship speed of about 58.1 knots, or 107 kilometers per hour. What's incredible about this speed is that it can be reached while the ship carries 1,000 passengers and 150 cars. And despite its regular operating speed being only 50 knots, this is more than enough to quickly bring passengers across the river plate, allowing the ferry to viably complete with the airplanes that make similar journeys between Uruguay and Argentina. What's also incredible about these jets is that they're very efficient, and they're exceptionally small and compact despite their power. And this small size allows them to be installed within the ferry's transom, thus saving valuable space on board. So we wouldn't be surprised if Vortzila continues to innovate in this space well into the future. Number 9. The Chrysler Turbine Car Strapping a jet engine to a car may not sound like a very bright idea, but that's exactly what Chrysler did with their turbine car. Manufactured by Chrysler between the years of 1963 and 1964, with the help of Italian design studio Carrozzeria Ghia, only 55 of them were ever made, but what made them really stand out was that they were powered by a jet engine. It could operate on diesel fuel, unleaded gasoline, kerosene, and JP4 jet fuel. Now, unlike with most cars, Chrysler hand-selected 203 drivers in 133 cities spread across the 48 continental United States to try the turbine for a three-month period. The deal was that the drivers would get the car for free and not pay for service and insurance. But the only thing that they had to do in exchange was to buy their own fuel and keep a detailed driving log. However, Chrysler ended up dropping the car altogether. And with the exception of a few cars that they donated to museums and kept in their own collection, most of the 55 test cars were destroyed. Therefore, any museums that happen to own one now have an extremely valuable collectible on their hands. We are constantly adding more people to the Top 5's production team to bring you all the best content. Be sure to subscribe with notifications on and hit the like button. Number 8. The EJ-22 The EJ-22 was certainly small, but given its low cost and relatively strong performance, it certainly was mighty. First used in Albuquerque, New Mexico on August 26 of 2006, it stood apart because the jet that it used was seriously hyped up. Known as the Eclipse 500, its promised $837,000 price tag was barely a quarter of the next cheapest jet, and its operating cost of just 56 cents a mile was simply unprecedented. As a result, it had more than 2,000 pre-orders before it even took its first flight, and was poised to do well on the market. Now, during on-ground tests, the EJ-22 engine looked promising, as despite just weighing 39 kilograms, it generated about 349 pounds of thrust, giving it a 9 to 1 thrust ratio that was almost double that of any commercial jet engine. Yet when the Eclipse 500 was actually flown for the first time, signs of trouble began to emerge. More specifically, its takeoff from the runway was far too slow. And while the plane was functional, it was clear that the engine simply wasn't up to snuff. Therefore, the creators of the Eclipse 500 were forced to partner with Pratt & Whitney in order to create a viable engine. While well, it was able to generate 410 kilograms of thrust with its weight of 118 kilograms, operating cost of 89 cents per mile, and overall plane cost of 1.3 million, it was far less impressive. So we think it's safe to say that the EJ-22 had a lot of lost potential. Number 7. The World's Smallest Jet Engine the world's tiniest jet engine is far too small to power a plane, but the fact that it works at all is nothing short of incredible. Developed in 2016 by Dr. Samuel Sanchez of Spain and researcher Jing Ma from China, the engine measures in at an astonishingly small 220 nanometers in diameter, which is roughly 200 times smaller than the diameter of a piece of human hair, and about three times smaller than the previous record holder. Now, unlike most jet engines, this engine is actually a nanotube, where liquid travels through it instead of air. In order to work, it must be placed in a liquid known as urea, where an enzyme-triggered biocatalytic reaction creates an internal flow that extends out into the fluid. This then causes an open cavity to form, and this results in thrust that propels the nanotube forward. According to Dr. Sanchez, he hopes that, quote, one day, our nanotube will be able to travel through a person's body and apply drugs where they are most needed. It will carry cargo or act as a needle with its sharp front. It can penetrate a cancer cell and destroy it." End quote. 
And while whether or not this is possible is yet to be seen, on our end, we hope that both him and his team are successful in making their goal a reality. Number 6. The World's Smallest Jet Engine on an Aircraft While the TRS-18 was not nearly as small as the 220 nanometer long jet engine we mentioned earlier, it stands apart because it was the smallest jet to ever be used on an aircraft. Known as the Micro Turbo TRS-18, it was deployed by a company known as Surmel. But after Micro Turbo took over the company, it began to develop and build the TRS-18 in the country of France throughout the 1970s. It was a simple, low-thrust, reverse-flow, single-shaft engine with a centrifugal compressor and axial turbine, and had a total of four variations during its lifetime, measuring in at just 61 centimeters long. At its peak, it created a mere 118 kilograms of thrust, but this was still enough to power both unmanned and manned aircraft. With the most famous planes it was used on, including the Italian Caproni A21J sail plane and U.S. designer Jim Bede's BD-5J airshow jet. Thus, while we think you'd agree that this jet engine was exceptionally small, it definitely punched far above its weight. Number 5. The Trent XWB Rolls-Royce is most famous for its line of luxury cars, and its engines are just as luxurious. And of all those in its repertoire, the Trent XWB is certainly the best the company has to offer. The current engine is the sixth generation in the Trent XWB line, and it's gotten to the point that it is today with the help of over 70 million man-hours of development. As such, it should come as a surprise that in terms of stats, the engine is simply incredible. For example, the force of its fan blades at takeoff is close to 82 tons, which is the equivalent of having nine double-decker buses lined up on each blade. It also takes in the equivalent of a squash quart of air during every second of takeoff, and its engine's RPM of 12,500 makes the tips of the blade travel at up to 1,900 kilometers per hour, which is about twice the speed of sound. Each of the 68 blades on board generates approximately 900 horsepower, which is the equivalent of an F1 race car. And at full power, the air leaving the nozzle escapes at more than 1,600 kilometers per hour. To top this off, the Trent XWB has a 15% fuel consumption advantage over the original Trent engine save users up to $2.9 million per plane when compared to the original. And as such, due to its reliability, there are more than 1,600 of these engines on order worldwide. So we think it's fair to say that the Trent XWB is a solid product. Number 4. The CFM-56 While the CFM-56 may not be the world's largest or strongest engine, its distinction of being one of the world's best-selling engines gives it a top spot on this list. Now, the CFM-56 can trace its beginnings back to the late 1960s, when a military engine producer known as Snackma began looking for a partner to help transition it into the commercial jet market. They found a partner in General Electric, and soon began to make plans to export some of General Electric's jet know-how to France, so that the two companies could work on the project together. However, they faced some roadblocks when the American government blocked the move on national security grounds. Yet after continued persistence, both American President Nixon and French President Pompidou allowed the project to go ahead in 1973. From there, General Electric and SNECMA created a joint venture known as CFM International. And after a few years of development, the first CM56 engine flew in February of 1977 as one of four engines on one of the United States Air Force's McDonnell Douglas YC-15s. However, by February of 1979, the joint venture had not received a single order in five years of operation and was on the brink of being dissolved. However, after receiving orders from Delta Airlines, United Airlines, and the Flying Tigers, Boeing, and the U.S. Air Force in quick succession, it rose up the ranks and became a widely used engine. And that's not to say it hasn't had some serious challenges. After all, it was prone to fan blade failure, rain damage, and hail ingestion in its early years several major accidents were caused because of these shortcomings. Moreover, the latest engine modifications are near immune to these problems, and over the decades, a grand total of over 1 billion flight hours have been logged with the engine worldwide. Number 3. The F-135 Fighter jets need powerful jet engines in order to be effective, and Pratt & Whitney's F-135 fighter engine easily ranks as one of the best plane powerhouses out there. 
For those of you who don't know, the F-135 powers all three variants of the F-35 and the B-21 bomber, and it's also able to generate an impressive 18,000 kilograms of thrust. But beyond its power, the F-135 also ranks highly in several other categories. The first is reliability, as its unscheduled engine removal rate represents a 250% improvement over the last generation of fighter engines, while the non-recoverable in-flight shutdown rate is 13 times better. It also has a mission-capable rate of over 95% and built-in diagnostic features for predicting problems, giving the F-135 unprecedented readiness rates for military operations. Beyond the fundamentals, the F-135 also has stealth features that enable the plane it's in to be invisible to enemy radar and heat-seeking missiles, putting it a step ahead of most other jet engines, and in all honesty, making it one of the few types of jet engines out there with almost no competition. This was great news for Raytheon Technologies, who on April 3rd of 2020 combined with United Technologies, which is the company that owns Pratt & Whitney. The idea here is that they'll combine forces and resources to push for new innovations, and with $74 billion in sales and 60,000 engineers on staff, Raytheon is the perfect partner for United Technologies. And since Raytheon's stock has done exceptionally well in recent months, we hope that this is a sign that the fundamentals of business and the plans for future growth are doing quite well. Number two, the power plant. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that jet engines are strong, so it should come as no surprise that they've been used to create power plants. Known as aeroderivatives, General Electric first propelled these power plants into being in the late 1950s when it created the so-called LM100 with the help of a helicopter engine. After the LM100, General Electric came up with the LM1500, which stood apart because it used GE's first supersonic engine, the J79, to create an engine that generated more than 10,000 kilowatts of energy. They would then continue to create aeroderivatives from the CF6 engine, which powers Air Force One and many other Boeing 747s, as well as the F404 engine, which is used by the FA-18 Hornet and F-117 Nighthawk military jets, until they finally came up with the LM-9000. Capable of producing 58,000 kilograms of thrust, the electricity generator is able to create a whopping 65 megawatts of electricity in the span of just 10 minutes, with this amount of power being able to supply 6,500 homes. However, what these power plants are supposedly designed to do is power massive liquefied natural gas, or LNG, plants. According to GE oil and gas customer applications engineer Teo Montgomery, quote, an LNG plant is like a giant refrigerator, but instead of making ice and keeping your food cool, it turns natural gas into liquid by bringing the temperature down to minus 160 degrees Celsius, end quote. To top this off, the LM9000 is so powerful that it enables LNG plant operators to restart production without first draining the refrigerant from the entire plant, making it a very high-tech piece of equipment. All of this innovation also makes it a top performer, as it produces 20% more power, can go 50% longer without service, and emits 40% less NOx emissions than existing models in its class. Therefore, GE Oil & Gas Engineer Director Maurizio Ciofini claims that, quote, we picked the best technology across GE and built the biggest and most powerful aeroderivative engine ever made, end quote. It's not hard to believe. Number one, GE9X. The undisputed king of jet engines is the GE9X. That's because it officially holds the title of not only being the world's largest jet engine, but the world's most powerful one as well. After all, its fan not only has a diameter of 4.3 meters, but managed to beat its factory specifications and clock in at 60,920 kilograms of thrust during a test run on November 10th of 2017 at General Electric's outdoor test facility in Peebles, Ohio. Now, the GE9X engine was first revealed to the public at the Paris Air Show in June of 2019, and ever since, GE has received more than 700 orders for it from the likes of Emirates, Etihad Airways, and Singapore Airlines. Now, in order to create such a top-of-the-line engine, General Electric relied on some top-of-the-line materials. For example, the engine's fan blades were created out of fourth-generation carbon fiber composite, and it has parts that were made with light and heat-resistant ceramic matrix composites, designed with the help of tools such as 3D printers. This blend of high-quality materials and tech allowed General Electric to achieve a 60 to 1 pressure ratio inside the GE9X. And according to General Manager for the GE9X engine program, Ted Engling, 
This means that, quote, the GE9X engine is not dramatically larger than engines in the GE90 family, even though it's much more efficient, end quote. As a result, the engine is 10% more fuel efficient than its predecessor despite its size, which is a pretty big deal since jet fuel often accounts for about 20% of an airline's expense. Therefore, while it may be a while until these jet engines are widespread, we'd definitely like to fly in a plane that's equipped with one sooner rather than later. Watch our machines playlist for more top 15 videos about awesome machines. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best machine videos.